So good afternoon. Um, my name is Esther Apasidis, and um, I'm now going to um, present my slides uh, for this talk on Master the Art of Confident Decision Making. So it is a, designed as a, a masterclass, as a workshop, just to help you get over indecision, um, help you make, oh, hello. <laughs> Sorry, I've just got somebody joining at the as I speak. Uh, hang on a minute, let me just uh, go into present. Oops, hello, hiya. Um, just trying to find the present here. Whoops, I had it open a minute ago. Ooh, what's going on here? Present, here we go. Right, okay. So welcome uh, this afternoon. It's pre pretty wild and uh, windy outside at the moment. So hopefully it won't, the mic won't pick up too much of the wind in the background. Um, so today's masterclass is uh, uh, on the um, art of confident decision making and helping you overcome dilemmas in your life and work. Um, so oops. So i uh, just give you a brief introduction to myself if you've no, don't, have never encountered me before. So I'm a holistic therapist. Uh, reflexology is my particular passion. Um, facial reflexology in particular uh, for anti-aging and menopause relief. Um, I'm also an abundance mindset empowerment and manifestation coach. I'm a speaker and meditation teacher. So I've uh, worked uh, over 25 years and nearly 30 years in sales and marketing jobs um, up to middle management position when I was made redundant in 2020 um, as a result of COVID. I've also run an award-winning coffee shop um, for five years. I trained in therapies after I um, sold this business um, in 2016 to 2018. And I continue to run this on a part-time basis. So when I was made redundant in 2020, that's when I switched to coaching, um, helping women in life and business overcome the lack of clarity, confidence, and helping them to focus by retuning their energy and creating an aligned strategy for growth and prosperity. I'm also now, as of the end of last year, a director of the community's interest company, offering wellbeing empowerment workshops and activities in South Wales. So that's where I'm based. I'm based uh, near Newbridge, uh, which is about uh, 25 miles, 20, no, not even that much, 20, 25 minutes from Newport. Um, I don't know where you're from. If you can just drop in the chat, if you like, or just, um, you know, um, where you're from, that'd be great. Um, so I've uh, obviously, uh, I've invited people from all over. Um, but this is um, helping you today um, get clarity. So Making choices. Every minute of every day, we're faced with choices, some we scarcely think about, like brushing our teeth in the morning or the evening, and others are more considered and debated, such as, do I marry this guy? Do I take this job? Or do I invest in this course? There is an inverse relationship between complexity and confidence. So the more complex the decision to be made, the less confident we become in choosing. So we become more risk averse and cautious. And that's a natural human uh, response. So how do you respond when stuck in a dilemma, dilemma? So do you sit on it? Do you dither and postpone and postpone, hoping something will change that will take away the need to decide? Or do you fall in the category where you defer to others to make the decision for you? Um, or do you make a decision and then think it a bit rash and immediately regret it as being impulsive or worry about it and fear the worst when it comes to the likely outcome? So every decision carries with it an opportunity cost. So what does this mean? It's the alternative cost of choosing something different or another way of looking at it, you are foregoing the benefits of one option by choosing its alternative. So for example, you may be faced with a choice between spending your profits, if you run your own business, on uh, continuous pro professional development or on Facebook advertising. And the possible benefits of widening your reach via Facebook could be foregone in favor of investing in yourself, which may or may not lead to more business or profit. 
So recognizing opportunity costs can help you make better decisions in all aspects of your life. But these can be difficult to ascertain if the benefits of the alternative foregone are unclear or unquantifiable. And this is where the mind really wants to have control and needs to know. And there is an energy a cost associated with indecision. So when you're indecisive or stuck in a dilemma, there is this energy cost. It's called low vibration, the energy of fear. So the vibration of fear of the unknown, fear of making a mistake, fear of taking a stand and being judged. You feel stressed. You lose time and energy in negative thought cycles, pondering what ifs, becoming anxious and compromising your sleep, possibly causing some physical malaise or discomfort and illness eventually. And we manifest all the time through our vibrational frequency for good or bad. A frequency of fear creates a vortex of fear. We attune ourselves to conditions, events and people that perpetuate indecision challenge and more discomfort and pain unfolds so when we're in this hesitation we're in this uncertainty this fear energy then we actually create more dilemma we attract more events and situations that create this indecisiveness that uh, really is self-fulfilling then so creating the energy shifting the energy sorry, is really your primary aim or concern to release the negative thinking, the patterns and emotions around indecision, about your uh, decision, sorry, including all forms of fear and doubt. So I'm just going to grab some water, my mouth is dry. So decision-making for success. So successful entrepreneurs are noted for their prompt incisive decision-making and for not changing their mind once made up. You could say they make instinctive choices. They do not doubt themselves and they are willing to take calculated risks and be experimental on the journey. They are able to learn from their mistakes rather than getting fixated and hung up on them. But what's going on under the hood? So fear of making a wrong decision stems from fear of not feeling capable or good enough, not trusting or believing in ourselves, so lacking the self-confidence. Or it could be from the, that we are led by the fear-based mind rather than the intuitive heart. So we're not connected to our spiritual, intuitive self, and we're not trusting in our intuition. So this has been the case. I'll tell you an example. So when um, in 2013, we were in the middle of running one coffee shop and my husband thought it a great idea to branch out to a second one. And um, my instinct really, or my first reaction was to think, well, this is really taking on too much. We're going to be stretched. Um, But he was really, really adamant that it was a wise decision. So I went along with him. I ignored really the whispers of my heart. My heart was saying, I think this is a bad move. And really, I couldn't put my finger on it. It just felt like not right. Um, And I literally didn't know how to tap into my intuition or really to trust it. And we went, I went along with his. This this is me making the decision based on my husband's input and his guidance being trusting in his decision making but whether it was good for both of us well we found out later that it was probably the worst decision we could make because um, he said we could sell the other business and focus on the one in the bigger city and where we could reach a wider audience and in the end we overstretched Um, we put too much money into the second endeavor we kept pumping it with money. So all the profit from one business was going into the other. And it also um, sold, really, I, I, I sort of um, took out a self-invested personal pension. So I put most of my pension into that business and most of it was lost. We traded for six months. We kept losing money hand over fist. 
And uh, in the end, we had to pull out. We sold it, uh, but obviously at a massive loss. And um, and it really affected my health at the time. Um, I was then diagnosed with a, an underactive thyroid as a result of all the anxiety and worry. And so I carried on with the second, with the original business, uh, but my heart was no longer in it. And that's when I decided to sell and move into a totally different business. And I, al I always believe that we make decisions. Sometimes these are lessons that we're supposed to learn and that we're supposed to extra extrapolate some gem from. So, um, and I realize that this has been my, what I call my dharmic path, that I have really grown into who I am today as a result of these lessons, of these hard knocks, as you like, <laughs> the hard, like, and that life's hard knocks, as it were, because I think I am more empathetic now. Uh, and I also have learned through doing that to tread down this more spiritual path. Um, so that's how I encountered when I started studying therapies, I encountered the energy alignment method. Uh, and I went more and more into self-development, personal development, read, read more and more on the subject. And um, as a result, I haven't looked back, to be honest. Um, my life is flourishing more and more from day to day. And I'm trusting more and more my intuitive um, self. So, you know, again, we can lack faith in this process of the unfolding, trusting, uh, you know, taking one step at a time and knowing that it doesn't matter what we do. You know, every decision is there for a reason. Um, we just need to go with the biggest hunch, as it were, what our intuition is telling us. And this energy alignment method system that I'm going to show you today really helps you overcome that, get out of your really busy head um, where there's a lot of confusion and gets you more connected to your energy, to your um, higher self energy uh, to make these aligned decisions. So let's shift the energy with the energy alignment method. So what is it? It's a unique form of applied kinesiology that uses the body sway as a biofeedback mechanism to identify and release resistant uh, negative energy so resistance is really you know low energy you feel low in your body you feel a uh, like cluster you feel fearful you feel worried you feel anxious this, these are all resistant energies uh, and we substitute it then with a higher vibration inflow energy what's that mean this feeling of being at peace feeling in you know this lightness of being really that's the higher vibration energy so what has it got to do with the decision making? So EAM, the energy light method, helps us get out of our cluttered, chaotic, overthinking mind, first of all. It then identifies blocks such as limiting beliefs and fears buried deep in our subconscious, many of which we are not consciously aware of. It helps to remove such blocks and ramp up the energy frequency to a higher point of attraction. So how does this help us with decisions? So in actual fact, it helps us attract positive uh, events, people to us that actually support or reinforce what we think is the right decision. So then we trust more. Um, so it also helps um, us in accessing our heart's intelligence for insert into our higher self wisdom. So in order to make inspired, intuitive choices. So in this heart coherent energy, we tap into fullest creativity, the intelligence of universal mind and into the field of all possibilities. So this quantum field. So it's manifestation energy. And when we talk about accessing the quantum field, it really is um, when we're making decisions from my head only, we're relying on what is already known, the intelligence that is available to us um, from whatever we've learned, or whether uh, from input of others, from what we research, from what we analyze. But to be honest, this is very, very restrictive. And when we access the, in the field of all possibilities, we actually access um, intelligence that is outside that spectrum. And a lot of it will make sense to the rational mind. 
but it will make more sense to the intuitive heart because that is the channel through which we receive this intelligence. In the energy alignment method, there are three energy states. So it's just to make you aware of them so you know where you stand. So inflow energy is in the zone. So athletes call this in the zone. It's a lightness of being. Everything is effortless and easy. We are calm, we're peaceful. We have these insights, um, these creative downloads. Uh, we're abundance oriented, intuitive, events are synchronous. We have these serendipitous encounters. So in resistance energy, this is stuck energy. So we repeat negative thoughts, patterns, uh, emotions trap us in a negative vortex. We feel that we're going one step forward and then one step back. And then there is an extreme form of resistance called reversal. So when we're in reversal, it's like Groundhog Day. We're going in the opposite direction to where we want to go. It's really deja vu, but with a neg real negative spin on it. Uh, we feel that we're not going anywhere, no change even years on. Same experience, thoughts and outcomes, but can be with different people and situations. So the five step method of the energy alert method is that one, we ask the sway, the body sway, a question. So it has to be a closed question with a simple yes or no answer, because step two is the answer. The body will move forwards to indicate a yes or move backwards to indicate a no response. And then the third step is to the experience. So this is where we scope, scale the resistance. We can use images. We can use feelings. We can use numbers. So it depends on your preference. So numbers are, tend to be linked to things that repeat. So patterns or beliefs, because beliefs are just repetitive thoughts, usually of a negative kind. Um, but we, if we're quite visual, we might prefer to see, um, you know, energy as like a, especially if it's blocked energy, we can see it as a wall or as a barrier. And then if we feel it, that's a really good way of accessing the intelligence of the energy. So where is it in our body? How does it feel? Um, is it a tightness? Is it constriction? Is it a heaviness? Um, is it? You know, that is usually the indicative of stuck feelings. So when we feel it as a light, um, you know, uh, an exuberant type of um, abundant energy, then we know we're in high, high frequency energy. And then four, step four is the transformation. So this is where we clear any resistance or reversed energy um, that I just mentioned in the previous slide. And then step five is all about manifestation. So this is really um, where we step into this higher self. We get into this high frequency emotional energy. And this is the energy of clarity and confidence when it comes to making decisions that affect all aspects of our life. Whether it's in terms of our health, relationships, work, finances and so forth. So you can use this in any area of your life. Um, so. We apply, uh, we go by a, an emotional scale. Uh, so we fix where we are in terms of our frequency. We often go with how it feels. So um, where we, how are we expressing this energy? Is it a type of fear? Um, are we depressed? Um, or could it be further up the emotional scale? Maybe not as heavy an energy as fear or uh, maybe it's a sense of overwhelm or doubt um, that is still on the negative spectrum. So what we try to do, we try to move the energy from low or uh, sort of energy, from slow vibrational energy, which we call resistance energy, to high frequency or um, vibration energy, which is a state of alignment and where the energy is moving faster. So where before starting with the energy alignment method, I always tend to get people to um, take some deep breaths um, into the heart space. And this is a the heart coherence breathing technique uh, that the Heart Math Institute in California 
have recommended to get into a state of flow and out of the busy head energy. So the heart focus breathing is uh, all a question of focusing your attention on your heart as you breathe in. And you imagine the breath flowing in and out of your this area of your body and you breathe a little slower and more deeply than usual. And you can feel a natural rhythm emerge. And then the second part of this is activating a positive feeling when you're doing this breath work. So you make a sincere attempt to experience a regenerative feeling such as appreciation of care for someone, a pet or a special place or accomplishment in your life. Um, and if you find that difficult, then all you have to do is focus on a feeling of calm and ease when you're breathing into this area. And if you can connect to a feeling of love, that's even better. So I encourage you now to start. So this is a good first step before we start using this way to get some answers. So just co cover your hands over your chest area of your heart space and close your eyes and just take in three deep measured breaths. Feeling that breath enter and connect with your heart. And you can let go any tension on that exhalation. So it doesn't matter how you breathe, whether you breathe in through your nose or your mouth, or exhale through the nose or mouth, it really doesn't matter. It's all about focusing on the breath as it travels down into the heart, into the chest cavity, into the heart space, and feeling a sense of calm and ease descend and feeling a warmth, a loving warmth there. So my preference is always to breathe in through the nose and release and sigh out through the mouth because I feel it really does expel any negative uh, resistant energy, any tension. So uh, we're now going to move on to the next slide. So the sway test. So you can get up on your feet. So it's up to you whether you want to put your camera on um, so that I can check your position. But I will show you when it comes to my, I think you can see me on camera on this. I'm assuming you can see me on this recording. I'm not sure. So best thing is to take your shoes off with this and be on terra firma with your stocking or a bare feet. So, so you feel that contact um, and it's a type of grounding as well. So the sway test is all about um, standing with your legs hip width apart, uh, knees unlocked and arms loosely hanging down by your sides and ensure you are hydrated at all times because that way the energy, the sway works best. Um, take several heart focused deep breaths, which we've just done. So the first test is to uh, ask so you nice and loosen your body and uh, ask, is my name? So in my case, I say Esther and I get a forward sway. Okay. If it has a backward sway, then you have um, an issue around um, your, well, possibly you're still trapped in your headspace. Uh, you're being a bit of a skeptic. So it could be that you have to really do some heart connected breathing, heart coherence uh, breathing again. Um, or it could be that we've got an energy reversal, which we can release in the same way as a resistance in our energy. And I'll cover this in a moment. But, um, you know, your body will give you an answer. Um, it, it should be forward sway if it's your name. And if it's backward sway, it could mean that you've got an issue around your name. Uh, that you don't like it, that you've been bullied. And then there's a whole story, backstory around that, which is a type of resistance energy. And we have to then release that. So let's move on to actually releasing the resistance um, around, you know, um, decisions. So let's ask, do I have a resistance to making a decision on? So you can see 
Um, I don't know whether you've had um, a copy of the workbook, uh, but there are various different questions in the workbook to guide you. Um, I'll just come to it in a moment. Right, so. So, yes, so in relation to decision making, do I have res uh, resistance to making the decision on? So you can ask that question. Do I have a fear around making a decision on? So there's different ways you can phrase it. And really, I ask you to go with ever what feels right. So when I work with my clients one on one, I really sort of um, suggest something to them. And then I say, please modify if the wording, if the nomenclature doesn't fit you, you know, um, if you feel that something re um, resonates or chimes with you better. Um, but, you know, you could have a pattern of thinking that I make the wrong choice around this issue or around something specific or just generally. So you can ask the question, do I think that people will think badly if I make uh, this decision? Do I think that I always make a poor decision in these kind of situations? Do I always think I'm the worst at making decisions? So you can actually check whether you've got a resistance around that, uh, that's, that you have a belief, a negative belief around that. Uh, do I have memories around making the wrong decision that I'm making, that are making me fearful now and are holding me back? Do I have a fear around making the wrong decision and how does it feel and where are you feeling it? Um, so we could check with the with the numbers as well. So, for example, um, I will try and do an example for myself. Unless you want to open up mic and just say, uh, is there a particular um issue you're handling now or being challenged by um, and that requires a decision or that you want some insight or clarity on so feel free to open up um, you know put a comment because I'm not sure whether I can see the chat at the moment I'm gonna oh somebody's put a chat in oh from Denmark lovely thank you um, so I'm just gonna show that now um, Oops, I didn't see, sorry, I seem to have lost the, um, anyway. um, so yeah, if you are, um, so if you have got a question, um, if you've got a particular um, challenge, um, you want clarity around a particular decision, then please feel free to open up mic and say something. So I'm possibly going to, um, so I'm going to um, do an example if you're a bit camera shy or whatever, or mic shy. Um, so um, do, I have a res um, do I have a resistance to doing uh, another workshop on um, magnetize your money flow? So actually, it's no in my case. <laughs> but um, do I have a resistance to working in groups? No. Um, let me see I, I'm trying to think of something because I do a lot of energy alignment work so I tend to be more in flow um, just wondering do I have a resistant um, resistance to, have you hi there you've got a problem <laughs> hi. Oh, thank you thank you for being brave and opening up the camera and the mic yeah I, I really want somebody to come forward because I, I do a lot of this work so I don't feel like I have any resistance at the moment <laughs> And actually, but I know there's lots of people. <laughs> Lovely to meet you. Can you pronounce your name? Ayana, is it? Yeah, Ayana is fine. Yeah. Ayana. <laughs> Lovely. Actually, I use Gru, but it's very difficult in other languages than Danish. So <laughs> I'll, I'll use. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Lovely. So yeah. I'm, I'm a, I, I don't have resistances in how I, I, what I thought. So now I've, I've checked that. And then yeah. I, I, I asked if I have a resistance to, um to earning money oh yes <laughs> because it was just you know uh, it was just uh, the next question in my what is on my mind yeah. at the moment yeah. uh, and and i i kind of more like circled it wasn't really a, a sway any neither right. forward or back right okay a circle yeah. anything that's not a forward or a backward a circle or a stationary if you're not responding either way it's a reversal so basically, it's an extreme form of resistance energy. 
so um <laughs> well great so there you are so what did what was the specific question you asked so this is this will be a good one anyway <laughs> i asked uh, um do i have resistance on earning money right okay <laughs> yeah that's fair enough <laughs> I, I'm, I'm. A, there are a lot of decisions at the moment, but they all seem kind of fine. So that was yeah. not really. So not really a decision as such. It's just a general resistance around uh, earning money, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I didn't ask about if I, if it was the decision on earning money. I could have asked that maybe. Um, or decision. Um, to so have money. Be, yeah. Um, what I would say is, when it comes to decision making, it's like. Mm. Um, you're making what you're choosing one particular path, aren't you? So this is more of a broad spectrum sort of resistance, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than like, or do I have a, a resistance to making the decision to do this in order to earn money? So yeah. that's more relating to a decision rather than do I have an overall resistance to earning money? Do you understand yeah. what I mean? So um so what we need to do is to release that general resistance and then you can actually ask, ask do I have resistance around making this decision to do this in order to earn money? Do you see what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So what we need to do is, um, so yeah, great. You might want to turn sideways on so I can see how your body's responding. Is, is that, oh, I No, I'm no, not you. Me. Not you, you, the body. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> not the camera yeah fabulous yeah, got you <laughs> so do i have a re resistance <laughs> so yeah do um do you f right okay um this this reversal right um can i release this reversal to um receiving money I have to ask myself. Okay, yes, you have to. Yeah, way. say it out loud, and then see whether the 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 sway responds. Do I have a reversal to receiving and earning money? Do I have a re reversal to receiving and earning money? Yes, it's slightly going for what you will find is when you're new to this, it's a slightly delayed response sometimes. Yeah. Okay, so what we do now is in this step four, we do a, a release, right? Okay, so I'm ready to release. I'm ready to release. This energy reversal. This energy reversal. Around. Around. Receiving and earning money. Receiving and earning money. I release this from my energy. I release this from my energy. In all forms. In all forms. On all levels. At all levels. At all points in time. At all points in time. I'm ready to release. I'm ready to release. This energy reversal. This energy reversal. Around receiving and earning money. Around receiving and earning money. I release this from my energy. I release this from my energy. In all forms. In all forms. On all levels. On all levels. At all points in time. All points in time. I'm ready to release. I'm ready to release this energy reversal. This energy reversal around being able to receive and earn money. Around being able to receive and earn money. I release this from my energy. Release this from my energy in all forms. In all forms. On all levels. On all levels. At all points in time. At all points in time. Okay, so what you have to do is just shake out your hands, shake, stamp out your feet a bit. It's a bit case and shrug your shoulders, sh shake off any resistant energy that may be hanging around because we do hold it in our body, you know. Okay, brilliant. So what we're going to do is just do a, a quick check in to see whether this energy reversal has been released. Have I released this energy reversal around re being able to receive money? Have I released? This energy reversal around being able to receive money. Brilliant. Yes. Fabulous. Okay. So now, um, what what sort of work do you do? Um uh, and I I just before I went on, I registered my company. <laughs> All right, okay. What's your company? Yeah, it's uh, um I'm writing a book on uh, yeah. 
the role of medical doctor and patient uh, doctor relationship. And my company is uh, heart centered health leadership. All right. Heart centered health leadership. leadership. And and I'm a medical doctor, so normally, I, but I'm not there now <laughs> for the last few months. So 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 you right. So you've moved away from employment, is it into yeah, your? I, I I'm I'm I own a clinic and I work as medical doctor, but uh -huh. I haven't worked as in a few months, and I'm selling it now. And uh -huh. I'm writing, so it's complete. So you're writing this book, and it's a complete. Oh my goodness me! Yeah. That's exciting though, isn't it? Yeah, exciting, but a little bit apprehensive. Yes. Yeah. How confident do you feel in this new venture? Uh, I I feel I feel it pretty good, but uh, new. I mean, all of this uh, establishing a company is is I haven't done before because yeah. it kind of it works itself when you uh, you have a clinic and you buy into it and it's already there and so uh, there's yeah. a lot of. Uh, new things and and also i've never written a book before so but i i know it's 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 here but yeah. uh, it's not uh, out there yet so uh, yeah oh okay great all right um but i really feel very very grateful that this resistance can be released because de it's definitely really yeah very, <laughs> it's not uh, supportive in any way no exactly no no so the the, the fear of the unknown, the thing is, we have a lot of these mythical fears. So the way I'm, you probably know this, you know, 95% is controlled by the subconscious mind. <laughs> yeah. And um, and it's a very emotional mind, but, you know, it's also very primitive in terms of it's protecting us, isn't it, from something. And in the past, it helped us because it protected us from physical harm. But now the fear that we experience is not a physical threat, is it? It's not from a physical threat. It's just really from not knowing, from not the unknown. And um, when we can bypass this, when we can decide that's not really serving me, we have then start trusting ourselves more and, uh, you know, moving more out of our comfort zone to do things new because we know doing what we've done before may not have had the results we wanted or it may not be our new true path that's our high self guided you know that um really is what we feel is our new calling so you know i've had a calling and before but this is like a new calling now and it's it is always evolving and it's always like and but each step of the way is you have to trust in you know, doing something a little bit different because that's how we evolve, isn't it? Um, but it's then using this to overcome that fear or to trusting, tapping more into the intuition and to trust that everything has its divine path and it will all unfold um, in support of us because it's when it comes from a heart centre, from a, a place of caring. As you, obviously, the title of your book or your <laughs> your business it tells me it does. You know, it's heart connected, it's heart centered, uh, heart driven. So really, nothing to fear. Really, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. Um, so yeah, I mean, when it all we, if you've got a fear around, so this will help you now with making some next steps and some choices. So. Um, so if you're at that point where you're sort of dithering or you're wondering, should I be doing this next or this is is this important next? Then this can help you with that as well, because I'll come on to that in a moment. So if there's any other resistance, so I would say it's always good to do a step five. Um, or, well, let's check further with, with any more resistance around this new business. So let's just try that. Do I have any uh, resistance? Do I carry any resistance in relation to starting this new business or venture of mine? Do I carry any resistance in starting this new business of mine? No, that's good. See, you've already released something. So the reversal is already released. So it's already uh, uh, done something within your energy body. So all we've got to do now is make sure that we step into this manifestation process. So into the alignment 
so and um, into the confidence that we are in the right place at the right time and everything will unfold uh, positively for us so all I'm going to say is now I am ready so if we just um, say, so, so sometimes we put our arms above our head but it might seem a bit woo woo for some people making this funnel but if you're open to it then let's go for it <laughs> I am ready I am ready to align to align and embrace and embrace confidence confidence conviction conviction and purpose and purpose in pursuing my new venture in pursuing my new venture i allow this I allow this with joy and excitement with joy and excitement into my energy into my energy in all forms in all forms on all levels on all levels and at all points in time and at all points in time i'm ready to align i'm ready to, to align and embrace and embrace confidence confidence and conviction and conviction in my own abilities in my own abilities and in knowing that this business will be an outright success and in knowing that this business will be an outright success i allow this with and joy and excitement with joy and excitement into my energy into my energy in all forms in all forms on all levels on all levels at all points in time at all points in time i am ready i am ready to align to to align to and fully embrace and fully embrace a sense of confidence a sense of confidence self belief self belief and fullest acknowledgement of my strengths and abilities and fullest acknowledgement of my strengths and abilities to make this new venture a resounding success make this new venture a resounding success i allow this with joy and excitement allow this with joy and excitement into my energy into my energy in all forms in all forms on all levels on all levels at all points in time at all points in time okay you can slowly lower your arms so there's always like a magic of three so we always say it three times and if we feel we need it more, then we can do it again, the whole process three times. And we may want to change change the wording slightly, it's whatever feels like it feels like it's really ramping up your and creating that higher vibration energy. So, um, you know, you can play around with the words to your liking, but as long as the final mantra stays the same. So what it's doing, it's just, um, it's all part of this neuroscience and neuroplasticity. It's just replacing the negatives beliefs uh, thought thinking patterns to something more positive and to embrace feel that in your energy so that's why we say with joy and excitement so we want to move up that vibrational scale and, and feel it within our body as we're saying it you know is that's the difference between just the affirmations that you really don't connect to and ones that really 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 connect with you because that's how we move the energy the universal energy moves through us, through our body, through our feelings, through our vibration. Yeah. And that's how it manifests. So, um, um, you know, when you're in this higher energy of confidence or feeling that, yes, I know what I'm doing, that um, and it doesn't matter if I only know really the next step in front of me, the rest will all come one after the other. And I trust in that process. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so in terms of prioritizing action, so the next slide on my screen is all about prioritizing action. So you can use this same technique to determine what is a priority to focus on right now, either in terms of actions or goals uh, and check with you. So what I tend to do first is make sure that when I'm making a decision on this or prioritizing that I'm in flow first. So the quick way of doing this is to check. So you, this is why it sort of, embraces both the east and western sort of um you know modalities is that we can check with our yin and yang energies if they're in balance or the masculine feminine energies. so um so 
we can check with the with this way um are my yin and yang energies in balance and then hopefully your body will sway forward to say yes i'm in balance and from this flow state then you can ask these questions because then you will get an aligned response so when you're not in flow it's not a wise decision to use the energy line method you have to get work on the energy first then once you're in alignment or in flow then you can ask what are my priorities so you may have a list a to-do list or an action list um, or a goal list and then you can ask should this be my number one you can move down the list should this be my number one priority right now and if it, this sway says yes, it sways forward, then that's great. You can start with that. If no, you move further down the list until you get a yes. Um, and then you work on that. And then each day or each once you've signed off one, you can move on to the next and then say, is this my next priority or is this my next number one priority? Um, and then so on. Um, but what may be useful when you're actually doing the action, if you feel a bit of um, trouble or apprehension or doubt or nervousness come up then you can do this technique to to relinquish to let go of what's um that feeling in you by doing the energy alignment so i'm ready to release this feeling of um indecision or uncertainty this nervousness uh, that i feel in my belly often we feel it is you know because excitement and <laughs> nervousness or fears always felt in this area isn't it in the gut area because the gut does speak to us in that way um so it's very difficult sometimes to, to distinguish but uh, you know you'll know as well where you feel like a heaviness on your shoulders then it's obviously more of a negative type so all just being more body aware i suppose more that awareness of your how you're expressing your energy in your body will help you in using the energy alignment method so when you feel it so you can actually say the release statement. So I'm ready to release this apprehension and nervousness around making this uh, or, or doing this action or this making this decision I, um, that I feel in my pit of my belly. I release this from my energy. And as you're doing so, you're sort of seeing it in your lifting from your energy. You know, I release it from my energy in all forms, on all levels, at all points in time. And you feel that release out of your belly area. So um, that's the way you can use it. So be feel free to use it. You know, there's um, you did you get the workbook? Uh, actually, no, I didn't. So I'll, oh. I'll, yeah. Okay. All right. So that will really help you going forward. Perfect. Um, and can I just ask you one thing yeah. with the with the yin yang sway? Yeah. Is it just this question? Is my yin yang sway uh, in balance? And if so it's a no, yin then yin and yang energies in balance oh, yeah, oh, yeah. So yeah it's just that question and then you see this way and if it's a no then you have to work on that you have to work on releasing if it's because uh a lot of us spend a lot of time in our head mm -hmm. space so that's obviously too much yang the masculine energy um so you can call it feminine masculine as well it doesn't really matter um if you're not familiar with the chinese terms um, so you can just say, I'm ready to release this excess masculine energy. You may want to ask this way, is it more than 20% in excess? Uh, is it more than 30%? So you can do numbers with that as well uh, to get it more precise. And then I'm ready to release this 30% excess yang or masculine energy. I release this from my energy in all forms and all levels or points in time and repeat that three another two times. So that's a way. And then you do the check-in again. So mm -hmm. uh, are my yin and yang, have I released this excess en uh, yang energy? And then it'll sway yes. And then you check again, are, my, uh, are they in balance? Are they 50-50 in balance? And then you should get a forward sway. And then from that point, then you can make the aligned choices as to which one to focus on next. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. <laughs> uh, and so... Just coming back to this, never a wrong decision. So when you're in flow energy, you realize there's never really a wrong decision. There are only multiple opportunities and potentialities which could all serve us. This is our, this idea of, you know, there are maybe uh, multiple versions of us and multiple situations. Uh, and it doesn't really matter because if we trust in ourselves, in our flow energy, then we're always going to make the right intuitive response um, decision. And even when we think we've done a wrong turn, see, that's when the fear mind, the fear based mind will turn on 
Um, but, you know, well, there's always going to be this karmic nudge. So karma always gets a bad name. It's really only a positive sign because it will help nudge us back onto the right path, what I call the dharmic path of self-realization and fullest you know, fulfillment. So, um, you know, it's really, when we take the wrong time, it's just literally, again, this lesson uh, and sometimes it can be part of our dharmic path. For example, m that poor investment in, you know, the poor decision to invest in another biz second coffee shop business that we, you know, with hindsight, you could have said, well, maybe that was there for a reason. At the time, it didn't feel right, obviously, because when we were going through that fallout, you know, the financial fallout and the, the physical the, you know, the impact on my health as well. It wasn't obviously a good thing, but what did I learn from it, you know? Um, and, you know, hindsight's a wonderful thing. But but when we actually move into decision-making with that open-mindedness, I think, that openness to receive and to, and it doesn't matter, whatever comes is all right, you know? Either we'll get a little knock, we'll have some sort of insight, new insight, or that's not really me, that's not really my path. Now I know I don't go for continue. So when you know you're in resistance and you know it's hard work. So resistance, when you always find that doors are being shut or people are not really being supportive, um, even though you know, um, you know, and then sometimes it could be a signal that it's the wrong path. But always tune in to your own inner world and in your inner energy really as to what feels right for you. And I actually had, I asked for some advice, oh, is this my right path? I, you know, when I had questions at the time, I, I before I used the angel alignment method, they said, well, just follow your bliss, follow your passion, you know? Um, it's hard, isn't it, when it sometimes doesn't make financial sense at first, but you that's when the trust comes in and know that if your heart is calling you to do something, then that's, it is the bet, that is the choice for you, not the head. Uh, and, you know, the head direction, the head direction will always really want to come back to the fear. Um, yeah. And as I said, this trust is the key thing. Um, and that's what I found. And it's not being attached to the outcome of anything as well. That's really important. And people call this the spiritual surrender. So it's just literally going with that flow because flow really is all about that. Being able to weave in and out, adjust, because if we're then too fixated in a specific outcome, we can't do that. We can't like allow things to really go their, you know, their natural course, as it were. We try and contrive a course for that out to get to that particular outcome. Uh, and when we just let that go, then knowing that everything will be good, will turn out well when we're in this energetic flow, then, you know, as I say, um, it's just, and it takes, it creates a greater peace of mind and inner tranquility when we allow ourselves to let go of the control. Um, because control is always back from the old judge that we need to control every outcome. We need to um, manipulate things to suit us because that's really coming from fear because we're not sure what's happening or we, we, we don't know, uh, we're worried. So your priorities for growth, you know, a fully, so my a skill, skilled and fully qualified energy alignment method, mentor will help you with the entire process and intuitively guide and prompt you. It is an organic process of tapping into the hidden stuff that restricts flow energy. Uh, and if you want more assistance with this, technique to build your confidence and faith muscles in decision making and determine your inflow priorities and direction in life and your work then you can reach out to me and book a free 30 minute one-on-one -on -one session as well so um that gives you i mean i've had lots of people say that that's really helped them with their clarity so these are just some of the testimonials that i've had um so even from one introductory call um Lots of nuggets of wisdom, helping get give them clarity and a way forward amongst the confusion they were feeling. Um, this lady then, before the pandemic, she was stressed, anxious, and working away from home. Um, so this is one of my earlier clients, um, and you know she literally, as a result, did the energy work. She didn't tell me at the time, but literally after the first session, she came back to me. She said, "I've no longer got restless legs." 
I found I was I couldn't sleep. I had my first restful night ever. And it's because we hold the mental, the emotional um, restrictions or tension obviously manifests itself in the body eventually. Uh, we feel that um, often with the feeling of not being able to move forward in life, finds its way into our legs um, because that, those legs are where our help us move forward. So often we find that in our legs or, you know, uh, limb, lower limbs. Um, and then if we're also um, feeling that we can't speak out, then we obviously feel that we often have issues around here in the um, in the throat area so, and also in the chest, the upper body, the thoracic area. So, um, or we feel if we literally... Um, feel that we got the world the weight of the world on our shoulders literally it will feel like we're taking on too much responsibility we're not sharing enough we're not delegating enough we find that tension in our shoulders and our back as well and financial insecurity is linked often to lower back pain too because that is where our that's our point of balance point of security as well um so yeah and um so I won't read out the full text, but, um, you know, um, you can just get a, a flavor of what that is, you know, because she was this other lady was also having problems getting clarity and hemming and hawing on on what she wanted to do with this uh, particular avenue of research and study she was pursuing. So um, and whether it was right for her. So, yeah, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, I will give you the. Um, if you, I mean, I'm going to stop share now. Okay, I will see if I can. So, if you um, do you have my email? Uh, I, I don't know. I I think I actually wrote my email in that chat um, messenger thread, but it's a little confusing, right? <laughs> Into Facebook Messenger. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, in which case I will have it then, won't it? You you sent me um, a direct message, yeah? Uh, you no, know, it's in that chat uh, role. Oh, I tell you what, can you just put it in the chat here now, just to make sure I don't yes I don't miss it, and then I'll I'll send it to you. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. So normally I get more people turning up, but I think I had a lot of last minute saying yeah. <laughs> saying I, they couldn't make it after all that, or they're double booked. I don't know. But to be I honest, like it doesn't really matter. And I think I always think the universe tells me that it doesn't matter. There's here, I'm here for a reason. Um, and whoever shows up is there for a reason, too. <laughs> it was really synchronistic for me. So I'm yeah. very, very grateful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, and I thought actually I had another meeting at one, but oh. I missed the time. So it was at 10. So, oh, so things it worked out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's 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 knowing that everything's working out perfectly, and it's always having that trust, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, fabulous. I'll just take a note of that, copy that now. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm going to stop the recording now. Ooh, trying to move it. I'm going to stop the record. Hang on a minute.